On today's show, GM, Ford, and FCA could save billions merging their powertrain operations. Japanese automakers are hiring more women to help deal with Japan's labor shortage. And we'll show you how Kia uses the Stinger's body structure to make a killer sound system. All that and more coming right up on AutoLine Daily. This is AutoLine Daily, the show dedicated to enthusiasts of the global automotive industry. Ford is getting rid of most of its passenger cars because it can't make money on them. But Ford is going to face another problem in just a few more years. Because around 2020, the crossover segment will be saturated. Every automaker will have lots of them. And that's when the incentives will come out and prices will start to drop. Happens every time. So while Ford made a logical decision to get rid of most of its passenger cars because it can't make money on them, it's going to face the same problem with its crossovers. We figure that Ford has a small window of opportunity to figure out how it can make money on crossovers when prices start to drop. And one way Ford could significantly cut costs is by merging its powertrain operations with another automaker. For example, Ford makes a two-liter four-cylinder engine. So does FCA and so does General Motors. And yet there's no advantage for each of them to develop their own two liter engine. They have other engines and transmissions that overlap too. Collectively, GM, Ford and FCA make over 20 million engines and transmissions a year. If they spun that off as a separate powertrain company, it could save them billions of dollars in investment. And maybe it could keep them in the passenger car business. Still to come, A simple, clever device to help block sun glare. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone Tires. Your journey, our passion. Dow Automotive Systems. Advanced materials that deliver better results. Lear, a global leader in automotive seating and electrical systems. And by Borg Warner. Propulsion solutions that support a clean, energy-efficient world. Dealing with sun glare can be very annoying while driving. Sun visors do help, but sometimes they can't completely block out the sun on the side window. And we just stumbled upon this clever device that helps deal with the problem. Called the tuck visor, you just press it flat against the window, slide it into position, and tuck it into place. And you can move it around as needed. It's held in place between the window and the trim. It starts at 12 bucks and is currently available at 200 TA Petro stations across the U.S., or you can order it on Amazon.com. Very simple, but very neat stuff. Japan's population is shrinking, and so is its workforce. It's estimated to drop by 8 million people over the next two decades. To fill the gap, Bloomberg reports that Japanese automakers are trying to hire more women. But there aren't many female engineers, and those women aren't really sure they want to join the auto industry which is so male-dominated. Toyota and Honda have recently opened more daycare centers near their factories and offered flexible hours for working mothers. It's a good start, but they're going to have to do a lot more than that. Just 2% of Toyota's managers are women, and it's less than 1% at Honda. AutoLine After Hours is this Thursday, and our guest is John Walker, an automotive specialist at EOS a company known for 3D printing. They're making everything from turbine blades to the whole front structure of a Volkswagen Caddy. We'll look at other applications for the technology in the automotive industry and find out where all this is headed in the future. That's this Thursday at 3 p.m. Eastern Time. Coming up next, how Kia uses the body structure of the Stinger to make one banging sound system. Lighter. Safer, stronger, quieter, and more sustainable. Tell us where you need to go, and we'll help you get there. Dow Automotive Systems. We don't succeed unless you do. Well, it was a cold and rainy day when we drove a dripping wet Kia Stinger into our studio. But we didn't let a dirty car stop us, because we wanted to show you something pretty unique about its sound system. Take a look. Vehicles can be drastically different from one another. You can have a teeny tiny little car or some giant truck or van. But 
there are a lot of similarities with vehicles, like where you're going to fill up your gas. It's going to be on one side or it's going to be on the other. Or if you've got a sedan, the rear deck of the car at the back, you're probably going to find speakers. But what do you do if you have a hatchback like this Kia Stinger? You open the trunk here, and there's no rear deck to put speakers. It's not, not a place to put it. So the folks at Kia turn to the folks at Harman. And one of the first thing that Harman does with any vehicle it gets, it tries to figure out where it's going to be positioned in the market and who the automaker wants to be compared to. The case of Kia, they were reaching for the stars. They're going for the likes of Audi, Porsche, Mercedes. But if you're going after those folks, you know you've got to have a premium sound system. And if you can't put speakers here, what do you do? Well, you will find speakers in traditional places, like in the rear door. And there's actually a couple smaller speakers in the back here for the passengers at the rear. But those tiny, small speakers in the back and the door and on the sides, they're not going to be able to provide the same kind of bass that a speaker that goes in the rear deck could. So what do you do? Well, Harman did something I've seen before. They actually took the subwoofers and mounted them under the front seats. You might say to yourself, Sean, if you've seen this before, why are you even telling us about it? Well, there's a couple of pretty trick parts of the system. These are actually Harman's slim subwoofers. So the motor or the magnet of the speaker has been pulled up into the cone rather than being mounted on the back. And one thing I'm sure you know with subwoofers is they usually come in some sort of enclosure because that's the way they sound the best and it's typically a wood box. But there's not room for that here. There's just nowhere to put that. And one thing you might also notice is how far these speakers are pulled out to the side of the vehicle. And that's where the other trick part comes in. The sound is actually vented, for lack of a better word, into the structure of the vehicle. And if you look at these pictures I was provided, I'd almost call that the frame of this stinger. And it also brought up another good point by Harman. That rear deck is typically made out of a thin gauge of steel, and it can rattle and move around. That doesn't sound very premium to me, but by being down there underneath the seat, the structure is just much more robust, and it's going to cause less rattles in the sound system, adding to that luxury feel of it. And you know what I've got to say? I've absolutely never seen, I've never heard of anything like this before, where the structure helps play into the resonance of the sound system. Really cool stuff. I hope you enjoyed it too. For AutoLine Daily, I'm Sean McElroy. Well, I'm still Sean McElroy, and that wraps up today's show. Thanks for watching, and we hope to see you again tomorrow.